So this is the first video in what will be a series of videos that will show how to take the daughter card that has the level 2 basic and a TR-80 model 1 and replace that daughter card with a single memory device that will plug into one of the sockets on the CPU board in the model 1. There's a few things worth looking at here. On the Model 1 main PCB, there's two sockets, Z33 and Z34. They're 24-pin sockets. One of these has the 24-pin ribbon cable that plugs into here and wraps around the board and plugs into the little daughter board. This socket was basically laid out uh, using a 2716 EEPROM footprint. A 2716 is a 2K byte device that's got 16K bits in it. It differs slightly from a 2716 in that there's these multiple chip select lines that come in on the socket here. What we're going to do is put a larger device into the socket and we'll show how to deal with the extra pins on the device. Some things to note on these kind of memory devices is ground is always in the lower left hand corner over here. VCC, the plus 5 pin, is always the highest rightmost pin. On a 24-pin device, it's pin 24. On a pin 28-pin device, pin 28. 32-pin device, pin 32, etc. The pinout you see here is consistent pretty much across all those devices. Data 0 through data 7 are always this set of pins at the bottom of the device. A0 to A7 are always this pins up the left-hand side of the device. And A8, A9, and A10 are always on these set of pins. These other pins here tend to vary. VPP can be used for other things. Uh, the chip enable and output enable are consistently on these two pins here as well. So the idea being is the ribbon cable will come off, the daughter card will be removed, another device will be plugged into here, some jumper wires will be made, and hopefully the system will run off that as the level 2 basic ROM. The level 2 basic ROM is 12k bytes, so uh, we need 98k bits at a minimum to uh, store the 12k bytes. The 2716 only has 16k bits, it's not big enough. A 271280 prom has 131k bits, it'd be large enough to store this. Said another way, it's a 16k byte device, it can easily store the 12k bytes of the level 2. I'm going to go ahead, however, and use a 27256. It's got plenty of room. A uh, large part of it won't be used, but in this case, I believe the 27256 is a, a more common device out there. It's something you might see more often surplus or actually be able to recover, say, off of a different system. So with that said, uh, let's jump in and see what it takes to get to a 27256. So let's go ahead and talk about what a 27256 would look like plugged into uh, the ROM socket on the CPU PCB in the Model 1. Uh, the 27256 has four additional pins. With the device plugged into the socket, those pins will overhang out here. We'll have to manually wire those up. The 27256 maps well, however, notice the data pins here, data 0 to data 2 mapping the same pins, data 7 to data 3 here mapping the same pins. The ground is in the same pin. Uh, A8, A9, and A10 map across well. So the majority of the pins can be left and plugged directly into the socket here off the 256. A few pins will need to be bent up out so they don't plug into the socket. And we'll use jumper wires to jumper those onto the, the CPU PCB. A11 would be one of those pins. A13 would be another one. Uh, A14 and VCC are overhanging here. So essentially what we'll have to do is bend up the A11 pin so it doesn't make contact in the socket. Uh, bend up the VCC pin so it doesn't make, again, contact into the socket. Wire the VCC and VPP will be wired together and they will be connected to plus 5 on the board. We'll bring in a jumper wire to bring in A12, A13, and A11. And in this case, because we really only need to access the first half of the 27256, A14 will simply be jumpered to ground. Uh, that way we can only see the first half of the device and then the chip enable will take care of enabling that device when any byte in this 12K address space is needed.